Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Josh Snipes, and if you haven't checked out this series before, I've done how to play an entry fragger and how to play support slash flex. Make sure to check those out. There's going to be a card in the top right or in the description. Not too sure where I'm going to put them, but that's going to be what this video comes from today. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at how to be an anchor. Now, this video is going to be kind of interesting because there are some characters that kind of move between sort of that anchor slash roamer slash lurker role that you might see. And I think that that flex might kind of be the nuance that make or break some people on this video. But I think that if I can define exactly what you guys are looking for, because I think some of these anchors can be a little more situational in terms of when they anchor and when they can roam. But I think you guys will understand that as this goes on. But basically, we're going to be going through what the operators are, what their roles are on defense, and then some tips. So if that's what you're interested in, make sure to stay tuned, and we're going to be heading on right into the video. Now, I just want to say really quickly, thank you so much, Alexa, for making this video possible. They are actually the sponsor for today's video, and that's why they're here. They sent over this mouse, and I got to use it for editing this video as well as the thumbnails. And some of the videos after this, it made it a lot easier on me because there's two joysticks, as you can currently see on the screen here, along with some ceramic feet. And when playing in game, though, I had to actually turn down the DPI on the mouse because of how smoothly it glided across my mouse mat. And that's not just me saying that. It honestly, I had to turn it way down from what I used to but seriously this was a great mouse and i thank you so much lexa for sending it on over if you want to come and get this mouse you can actually buy it at best buy or gamestop both on and offline so either in store or just go online to go check it out lexa the mouse is also available on amazon as well as a purchase link that will be down in the description below lastly thank you so much lexa for sponsoring this video and being the first sponsor for this channel now taking a look over at the operator list that we have Bandit, Mozzie, Goyo, and Valk. Those are four operators that can kind of go either way. They're not necessarily anchors on every single site, but they're also not necessarily going to be roaming or flex on every single site. So one of the biggest things to me is that it just really depends on the situation that they're currently in. Because if you think that Valkyrie might play that C4 on site, or she might just play at C4 from down below on the roam. Or maybe even go for late flank. So it really just kind of depends on a lot of how they've played. But for the sake of this video, we're going to be putting them in some categories. Now, the only people that aren't going to end up in these categories are going to be Mira, Doc, Rook, and Clash. Now, these are just, I don't have an exact category for them because they kind of all don't do the same role. Mira might be more so in the plant denial role, but we'll see in as this video goes on. Now, three roles that we have is going to be Plant Denial, Breach Denial, and Intel. Now, Plant Denial is probably one of the most important ones, more so in higher levels of play where people actually plant the bomb, not so much in lower levels of play because if you watch a gold or silver game, a lot of times it usually just comes down to the kills. Not everyone gets the plant off, but if you watch Pro League, you watch Competitive, Planting is almost part of, it's built into strats that you need to do. So a lot of time, these operators are the important parts. Now for Plant Denial, Lesion, Smoke, Goyo, and Warden are going to be your four Plant Denial operators. Now you may be thinking, why do they all fit in sort of Plant Denial, but the other ones really don't? Now I think that these operators directly have an impact on denying plant. Smoke especially obviously has a huge impact on whether or not a team can actually get a plant off. Legion is great at stalling out time and if you step on a goo mine, you're not going to be able to get that plant down at all. Goyo, oh, oh my goodness, Goyo, I have so many things to say about Goyo. Those shields really can deny anyone from coming into sight and it holds it for I believe 10 seconds maybe even less but i mean that is time that if you can buy that time in such a big area it does a ton of damage it really can hinder our team from getting the plant down now warden was the last one that i really was like i'm not really sure i even forgot about warden until i had to remake this clip a couple times but warden is one of those characters that I, he doesn't get enough play and i don't think that that's really his fault i just think it's kind of the nature of his loadout and kind of the gadget that he has they might have to give him a buff in order for him to see a little bit more play but overall warden is definitely used for being able to see through smoke see through all the flashes that might get thrown on in i think that he's not the strongest playing to now operator he's probably one of, i would say actually he'd probably be one of the weakest because there's, there's not really too many people that have his gadget or a gadget like his, but if you think about all the other operators that you can choose, there's just better operators to choose from. Now, if, as you were seeing, Mira can kind of fit into this, so I 
kind of put her in this also, but I didn't have her on my list in this category necessarily. Now, Breach Denial is going to be your Kaid, Bandit, and Mute. Again, this is one of those situations where Bandit was probably going to be an anchor in this situation just because of the fact that he needs to hold down the wall. I don't think I need to explain why these guys are Breach Denial, but just for the sake of fact, Kaid and Bandit both electrify the wall. They can get rid of charges on a wall, so a Thermite Charger, Kairos, they can get rid of those. Maverick obviously does kind of counteract both of those characters as a whole. But Mute also is sort of a breach denial. The only difference is, is that it doesn't get rid of the it doesn't get rid of the breach charges or the thermite charges or the Kairos. Instead, it just makes it so you can't open it. So they're gonna be stuck there. But as long as the mute charge is still there, you don't have to worry about anything. Now the last one is going to be Intel. That's gonna be your camera operators, the people who basically give you all the information that you play with in game. That's going to be your Echo, Maestro, Mozzie, and Valkyrie. Now, Valkyrie and Mozzie can be used on the roam, but they can also play Inker on site because they have C4s and the gadgetry that they have allow them to do so. Plus, if you're going on cams too much, you don't really want to die off site while you're on your cams because you're going to end up being a lot more useful later in the round, especially Mozzie if you can get a drone. I honestly think that these are pretty much self-explanatory. Just set down your cameras where you need to and basically give callouts. I think they might be more towards anchors than roamers just because of the fact that you're going to be on cams so much. But I think that overall, if you're going to end up playing these operators, you just have to be careful with what you're playing and how you're playing them. Because even when you're anchoring, someone could rush site and you don't see it because you're on your cams. Now, Mira, Doc, Rook, and Clash are just the last four that I didn't put in any category or any specific category, excuse me. Now, the biggest thing to me is that Doc, Rook, and Clash are pretty much going to be anchors just because they're kind of slow. But a lot of people like to sort of peek with Doc and Rook and then run back to side as soon as they're done peeking. Clash obviously is going to be used to try to stop people from trying to plant, but she's not direct plant denial, and so I didn't put her in that category. But Clash can be used quite a couple different ways. I've seen them people use her on Rome as well in terms of helping her Rome is out. Because it's a moving shield, so you don't have to worry about too much. But I think overall, Clash has seen a little less play this season than she has seen in the previous seasons. Because people kind of figured it out these days. Heading on over to the tips for some anchors. And what, what tips could I possibly have besides playing the objective? Obviously, that's kind of the nature of an anchor is play the objective. But one of the biggest things, as I was asking some friends yesterday, what, what are some tips that you guys would give to them? They actually said play the objective, but I took that one step further in my mind. I think play the objective means a little bit more than just what it sounds like. The biggest thing to me is you need to, as an anchor, understand when you need to stay on site and when it's okay to leave and try to go on a late flank or try to retake, say if you're playing on the basement of consulate, try to retake that piano and try to get back that control that you can. Because honestly, if you can get retake control of piano, you can watch it from above and it's a lot easier that way. The biggest thing to me is playing the objective isn't always necessarily staying on objective, but it's playing around, playing, make sure that the enemy team isn't able to plant, especially when you're playing anchor. Now, this is going to usually be one of those two speeds that we're talking about that kind of flex between sort of like your Mozzie Valkyrie type players that might sort of go on a late flank or something like that. It especially helps when you have Intel to help you sort of rotate in. Let's say if you had a Valkyrie cam in there or a Mozzie drone in there, they could tell you if a room's clear or not. You might even have an Echo drone sort of drone you into where you need to go on the map. Honestly, late flanking is going to be the name of the game if you want to try to retake some control, but that's going to be a video for a different time. Now, the next tip that I have for you guys is something that I think every Siege player should have, but especially anchors when you're trying to hold down the site. Now, that's going to be playing off of sound cues, understanding sort of your game sense, what the rotation of sites might be like, how people play sites, and sort of what to expect when you're going to different sites. Now, sound cues is one of the craziest things that I think that a lot of players will start to learn as you get more and more experience in playing the game. Now, what I mean by sound cues is, let's say you're, again, back on Consulent Garage. You're going to hear flashbangs usually going off because that means they're trying to clear out an ADS. And then you're going to probably get followed up by either a smoke grenade or a frag grenade, depending on what they're trying to go for. If they're trying to clear out a roamer from behind white, probably going to be a frag grenade first, then a smoke grenade to hold off that angle. That is your cue to know that the plant execute is probably going to be going down or at least an attempt at it will be going down to try to bait out your smokes, bait out your C4, anything like that. 
This is where your intel sort of helps to figure out what exactly is happening on site, especially Meister camps that can see through the smoke. It's really, really useful, and I think that if teams are able to set up their intel correctly, all of this stuff plays together well. So if you're able to work together as a team, set up correctly, you'll be A-OK. -okay. But seriously, sound cues will tell you what exactly is happening at what time. Every Siege player should know how to play with sound cues, but especially anchors should be able to use that time and time again. And part of that is game sense because you will start to realize that people sort of do things out of tendency and out of what works, especially on takes. So make sure you guys are listening. One of the biggest things that we talk about is utility and the importance and use of utility, when to use it, how to use it, all of that good stuff. Now, utility is your echo drones, your smoke gas canisters, those impact grenades, Anything that really helps on site that isn't your guns is pretty much considered utility for the most part. Now, utility is really something that needs to be managed. You can't just use it all willy-nilly. It needs to all have a purpose. And that's one of the biggest things that I feel like a lot of teams sort of struggle with, especially newer players, because you sort of go, oh, there's a guy, I'm going to throw a C4 at him, even though it's 20 seconds into the round, I could have just shot him. They're just like, oh, that, that would be a cool kill. Now, if you're just playing for fun, that's totally fine because it doesn't matter. But if you're playing in a higher level of comp or you're playing in a higher level of siege, you want to use that utility for a purpose. If you throw a C4 and then you don't get anyone 20 seconds into the round, you just waste that C4 for the rest of the round and you don't get to use it, especially if the execute ends up going down you're left on sight and you can't really necessarily shoot the person, but you would have been able to throw a C4 had you had one. We talk about utility a lot, especially when we're seeing smoke play. Now, smoke is a really hard operator to use, I think, and I think that a lot of people really struggle with the fact that you can't just use smoke canisters whenever. Smoke's not a roamer. He's going to be someone that's going to help you with the denial on site. And I think one of the biggest things is that people don't necessarily understand that. Honestly, if you can hold a smoke gas canister, all three of them, until the last 45, maybe 30 seconds of the round, and the execute hasn't gone down yet, you're going to be in great shape. If you end up using those in there's still a minute left, you might have a lot of problems because smoke does a lot to deny the plant. This goes pretty much for all the plants now. Also, I think that overall these things all sort of carry on. If you think about it, if you lose all your lesions before the XQ goes down, you're not going to really be able to do anything with it. Now, lesion kind of is an exception because some people will normally put lesions behind a site to sort of give intel of where someone's coming from rather than sort of deny the plant. But I think overall, you get the idea that the importance of utility, it all needs to have a purpose. You can't just waste it on a potential kill. You need to make sure that you lock down kills, especially when it comes down to your team in the last minute. Now, before I talk about the last tip, the one of the few things that I want to mention is that some of these things do seem sort of like, duh, why did like, how do you not know that an anchor is not supposed to do X, Y, and Z? There are a lot of people that watch this video that have not necessarily played these operators or haven't played this game for too long that are watching this and going, wow, I did not know this at all. So that's what this video is for. And that's to sort of, maybe you haven't played anchor before. Maybe you've played a lot of Roamer and you don't necessarily know how to play an anchor. That's what this video is for. So if you're wondering why some of these seem so oblivious and so obvious, then that is why. Now, the last tip that I have for you guys is that if you're playing an Intel operator, you want to try and stay alive towards the end of the round. Now, not necessarily Valkyrie. Valkyrie is one of the few people because you can't move her can you can't like move her cams and her cams aren't going to have an effect on the end of the round in terms of actually doing damage or having some effect on the planter they do give off intel for your other defenders but they don't necessarily have any sort of effect on that and you can't move them around they don't just roll around the room or on the wall or anything like that but one of the biggest things to me is if you're playing a maestro or echo especially but also a mozzie you're going to have the ability to be able to sort of run over and move your cams around. And especially with an echo drone, you might get it to go around a map or go around and re reposition onto a site so that you can hold that a little bit better. Now, when you're playing with those operators, you want to try staying alive till the end of the round. Because honestly, if an echo lives till the very end of the round, he can literally deny the plant completely by himself he doesn't need help from anyone else he doesn't need anything else he just needs people to guard him so that he doesn't get killed in the process and that's honestly if you're in a 1v1 with an echo at the very end of the round just go find him and try to kill him because you're not going to end up winning the round out because he's going to be able to deny you 
now that's going to be the tips for today i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope these weren't too simple but i hope someone learned something because that's the goal of these videos but if you have any questions down below or any tips down below make sure to let me know and let everyone else know because i'm sure i missed some anchor tips as i was making this video again thank you so much alexa for sponsoring this video and that's going to be it for today anyways guys gonna wrap things up and this is going to be a josh snipes signing off